Welcome back, everybody. It is August 31st, 4 p.m. Central Time, and uh, here we are today. We're going to have a great topic that we're going to be talking about this afternoon. I have Red Wimet with us, and welcome back, everybody. It's Mob Vlog. Red Wimet, how are you doing today? I'm doing chipper. I'm there. Chipper? Holy cow. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> well, good. I uh, We are in for one hell of a show today because we're going to talk about one of the... Um, well, we're going to talk about a pretty famous scene from a movie. And it's a, it's a, it's a damn good question. It really is a, a good question. Um, it's a really good question. The Chicago Outfit Mobsters, Red... Were they loved or were they feared? <laughs> I think they were both. They were and both. Which is better, right? To be loved or to be feared? And I think that it most depends of- on the mobster. It depends on the mobster. I'm not the first one to ask this question. I really am not. I am sure that most of you guys out there have thought about it. And real quickly, I just wanted to say hello to a few of you um, before we get going. Before we get going, just wanted to say hello to a few of you guys. Uh, Cindy Workman, Greg Polly, how are you guys doing today? Uh, Don Chichio, Deep Portzalo, John Wallace, Living Good Inca, Robert, Jack Napier. Ooh, Jack, are you new or did you change your moniker? Because I've never seen the Joker on here before. Cicero, good to have you in the house. Gomph, nice to see you. Tony Johnson, Bobby Bag of Donuts, everybody's here today, guys. Even Catherine Guerrero, Julie M, everybody is here. So, hello, everybody. And uh, today's show, again, we're going to be talking about, <gasps> Kyle got it, Bronx Tale. We're going to be bringing up this one question. And this question, like I said, I'm not the first one to ask it. Is it better to be loved or feared? Mm, good question, right, Red? Right. Okay. And, you know, a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys, they, they were, they were feared. They were also loved in different ways, but what's better and why that's, that's really what it comes down to. That's so open that, to opinion. That's open to opinion. It is. I mean, look, people feared Tony Spilatro, right? Oh yeah. All right. Did people love Tony Spilatro? I'm sure they did. Okay. He had a soft side to him. So a human side, a human side. Yeah, exactly. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I got an interesting phone call this week from somebody who knew Tony, almost like was raised by Tony. We're going to have him on the show. I'm not going to, no spoilers, but, um, but um, one soon we will. And, and, and that's the, that's the part of it. It's the humanized. It's the, right. Did they do bad things? Yes. Okay. But you know what? We've all done something bad. And if you say you haven't, you're lying. Did you watch what they did bad? Did you see the bad deed? No. I well, didn't. I didn't. You, I read about them now, but I knew a lot of mob bosses, and I'll tell you what, they didn't do bad. Not in front of me. They didn't do bad things. I heard about bad things. I read about bad things. Right. And most of the time, if you talk to them about this, oh, I, I don't know. No. They, they just brushed it off. Uh. Or you must have me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> Sonny Zaro, they were respected. Don't know if anybody loved Ayupa. That brought up Ayupa, actually. We were talking about Joey. I, I told you. Okay. So, <laughs> Red said to me, go ahead, Red. What did you say to me? I said, I don't think many people loved Ayupa. He was, uh, all he did was hand out bad things. He did. He was a boss that was hard. 
very hard man. And, you know, Adam brought up uh, when we, during this conversation, Adam brought up, well, he must have had friends that loved him. He, they went fishing with him. How do you know, Adam, they didn't go fishing out of fear because he said, come on, I want you to go fishing with me. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, if that guy said to me, let's get in a fishing boat and go out on the lake, right? I'd be sitting there going, am I coming back? How many people <laughs> going, bit their tongue in front of him? Did, I, did He had a family. He had kids, Ayupa. Oh, yeah, they're loved by their families. It's a different life. You have to take that head off when you go home. You don't sit down and say, well, I had to whack three people today. Don Chichio de Porzalo, in my opinion, just fear or just love will get you killed. Add fairness to the mix and you get a long-lived boss. Tony Accardo, Al Pilato, and Albert Taco all had three qualities. They all had three qualities. Three qualities. Good things We're come in those qualities. We're going to find out what those qualities three. are. What? Good things come in threes. Good one things. to balance it off. One to balance it off. You got the good, the bad, and the normal. You know what I hear comes in threes? If there is such a thing as normal, <laughs> I call it average. <laughs> you say good things come, come in threes. You know what comes right. in threes? Death. Death always comes in three. <laughs> oh, we just had a mobster guy dying. Well, there's going to be two more happening, you know? It, it always is. It, it comes in threes. Death. So. Um, snipers. Snipers. They they look at somebody when they spot their target or a cigarette's lit. That's the three rule about the cigarette lighting a cigarette. The third person never lights because the first one lights it. It gives them the, the aim. The second one. It, he takes he takes better aim. The third one he pulls the trigger. So that's why it's an old superstition. You don't light three cigarettes. You light yours. You may light somebody else's, but that's it. So the three are fear, love, and fairness. Those are the three qualities. Being now, fair is very important. Fair. So let's let's listen to this. It's nice to be both, but it's very difficult. Yeah, you want to be both, but it's difficult. It when their ego gets in the way or their personal feelings. I never liked that guy anyway. Or wait a second. I brought him up. He's a friend of mine. It can't be done. Joe Lombardo. Feared? Loved. You knew Joe. Both. 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 Was he fair? He was loved by everybody in the neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood loved him. Was he fair? Yes. He was extremely fair. He was logical. He was well-educated. He was art articulate. Maybe not college-educated, but he was well-educated. He knew people. He could read people in a second. You know you know that Elon, Mu Elon Musk dropped out of college. Just proves you don't have to go to college so, to be successful. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Michael Graham, that... That's one time Adam didn't want to go fishing to catch and release. Caught by the mob and released into the lake in chains and cinder blocks. No kidding. <laughs> catch and release. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. So, Heidi. I had a cement in the boat. What's, right, what's well, with the bales? What's <laughs> with the feet in the back, you know? <laughs> Heidi Mahdi. Uh Hi, guys. I was thinking about how Chicago mobsters did not get their fingers pricked like the rest of La Cosa Nostra, is this true? Yes. They didn't do the finger prick and the burn no. the picture of the saint. No. They do that in New York. You know why they do it in New York? Personally, I think they watch too many movies in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my buddy. It's a Sicilian tradition, that's why. There, there you go. See, in Chicago, so, it wasn't all Sicilian. Very true. So... Best not the difference between New York and Chicago. Right, exactly. So, so, what's the choice here? But if I had my choice, I would rather be feared. I, you. By the way, I love this scene from that movie. I really do. It's it's one of my favorite scenes uh, in, in that movie, and because it really does, it goes into the whole psyche of all right. You want to control people. You want people to love you, but you want people to be afraid of you at the same time. In that in that scene itself, he's showing the kid that he loves him. He's showing the kid that he loves him. He's teaching him something. 
I really? want you to get an education. He tells them to go to school, get an education, and learn what you can from me on the street. Then you got them both. All right, let's talk about friendship. Friendship is not important. With money, mean nothing. You see how it is around here. I make a joke, everybody laughs. I know I'm funny, but I'm not that funny. So no friendship is bought with money, which is very true. Honestly, we, we go back to Joy Joy Labaro, the clown. I know I'm funny, but that not that funny. Right. Well, the people laugh because they got to laugh. Got to laugh. What? You didn't think that was funny? The boss made a joke. You better laugh even if it's not funny. <laughs> Why are you afraid not to? Um, I don't know about afraid, but uh, I I'd be concerned that he didn't think you had a sense of humor or that he didn't have a sense of humor. So I, they do it. They joke around to be loved. They do. Seriously, street stories? There's no law in La Cosa Nostra? It's just Cosa Nostra? Our thing, not this thing of ours. La Cosa Nostra. Fancy Brainy, that butcher boy. Where? Oh, my God. The butcher boy. Fancy Brainy, that butcher boy. I should have never given Red access to that button. <laughs> Just call me Francis Brady, the butcher boy. It's funny when I was when I was growing up, I was telling Red this last night. We were putting this show together. I said, you know, when I was growing up, my dad had a nickname for me. He called me the butcher boy. And I started looking around online and found the found this clip. I don't know why my dad called me that, but he did. Francis Brady, the butcher boy. Where? This Brady, the butcher boy. Just call me Francis Brady. I'm, I'm every time I get one of these wrong. <laughs> That's what the button's for. <laughs> That's to Nostra. All right. I'm, I'm with you guys. Um, in Chicago, instead of a finger pricking ceremony, they go to a restaurant for beef sandwiches and pasta. That's set. right. <laughs> and a pasta. Whatever. Yeah. Wow. I love it. So, so Cindy Workman, you choose fear. You'd rather be feared than loved. Got to have both, Cindy. You gotta be loved too. If somebody's afraid of you, they're not gonna come and see you. They're not gonna be around you. Well, that's they're if they're stuck you. they're gonna sneak behind your back. They're gonna do anything. It's like you said, if there's too much. It's fear that keeps them loyal to me. But the trick is not to be hated. That's why I treat my men good, but not too good. I give them too much, then they don't need me. You don't wanna be hated. That's right. If you fear too much, then they hate you. And and you come you don't then you're not loved at all you're, you're literally hated and you're not fair either you're right it's a it's a combination it's a it's a very very it's a fine line you have to walk you got to balance that if you're going to be you're it's like any man, any man that's in a powerful position a commanding officer um, um he's got to be loved and feared a politician they have to be loved and feared sure any person that's in power in any way, they have to be loved or feared. But both is best. Oh, of course. Of course. Have some kind of balance. What does C say after this? I give them just enough where they need me, but they don't hate me. Don't forget what I'm telling you. They need him, but they don't hate him. So just enough. Just enough. Love. It's a fine line. Very fine line. Let's look at some of these comments, guys. And thanks, everybody, for coming in. Hit the, hit the uh, like button if you guys are just coming in. Smash the like button. BS yeah. Jeff. Uh, it's good to see you, Brady. Was Tony hated because they feared him? I don't think he was hated. Now, maybe some of the other mob bosses hated him and feared him. They were afraid of what he was going to try and do when he came back to Chicago. Sure. So... He met his death. Living good Inca. It's just like parenting. Have to have both. Love yes. and fear equals respect. respect. They're people of authority. A parent is a person of authority. Cindy, I fear my parents, but I also love and respect them. You know, it it makes, makes sense. I, I can relate to that. Um, <laughs> William Kirchmayer. Stalin was so feared so deeply. He was... Feared so deeply, no one wanted to stop clapping after he for, after, 
no one wanted to stop clapping first. Stop clapping first. They didn't want to be the first person to stop clapping after he spoke. They stood there and wait for who's else going to. As soon as you stop, I'll stop. I don't want to be the first one to stop. You, know, you guys still clapping? All right, we're going to keep clapping. Oh, that guy stopped. Anybody else stopped? <laughs> crazy. That's that's crazy. Uh, Red, did you love or fear Frank the German? I didn't love him. I didn't love him at all. Tony, yeah. I loved. Tony, I loved. But the German was telling me about how he killed Tony. So I didn't love him at all. Frank Schweiss. That's who he's talking about when he says the German. Yeah. How about Hanson? Um, I didn't really love him. He amused me. He had funny jokes, witticisms all the time. He, he was cute in his own ways. But he wasn't really a lovable person to me. Did I fear him? Not really. Eric Phillips. Mobsters should be feared by civilian Peckerwoods. <laughs> mobsters should be loved by other mobsters. If a mob boss fears you, you ain't going to last long. That's right. You see uh, somebody climbing up the ladder that wants to take your place, that wants to replace you, you eliminate them. That's it. So if you're a threat to a boss, that's not a good thing. So you want, so, okay. All right, let's talk about that dynamic because that's a different dynamic altogether. I mean, we're talking about do, uh, uh, do other mobsters fear the bosses, but you flip it around. The bosses, do they have respect for their crew? Do yes. they, they? They have do. love for certain people in their crew. This guy's a good earner. He's got, he's polite. He's got talent and he always treats me with respect. He gets respect in return. Frank there's, a hug. there's an arm on the shoulder. There's a handshake with another hand over it. I, I told you about the handshake where, you know, you shake, I can't do it this way, but you shake hands with somebody and the second hand comes on to grab the other hand. Yeah. It's a, it's a sign of affection and it's a sign of respect. Well, you know, that's you know, the do that. thing. Oh, quick, quick. Uh, Jim Yeager just wanted everybody to know that's on medication in Chicago. It's 20 <laughs> minutes after the war. Mm. Um, the, the, um, it, it, you know, Jose ultra cowboy Christian, I, 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 by the way, thank you for tuning in and uh, please hit the like button, subscribe. If you haven't, you're new to the channel. Uh, but Jose Christian, it's funny how after they took the mob down in New York C city, crime got worse. Same thing happened in every city, even Vegas crime got worse. Chicago, look at it right now. It's Chirac. So <laughs> it is. I, I mean, it really is. is it? So <laughs> they kept things here. People were afraid to act up. So I guess having fear is a good thing as far as controlling people. I, and I'm not trying to twist the subject here, but when you want to control people, what do you do? You make them afraid. Well, the first thing is when a baby's born, what's the first thing? No. The first fear. word you learn is no. First thing yes. that my dog Addie learned was no. First thing that. You're right. That's the first thing that you that you learn. And it's for your own good to learn that. Because when you go reaching up as a kid onto the stove and your mom's like, no, you know, don't want out. you to be hurt. That's love. That's love. And it's fear because they love. They, they instill fear in you because they love you. Isn't it crazy? When you know, you it, it gradually goes up into the, uh, it raises into the mob in the Chicago outfit. Fear? Yes. Love? Yes. That arm over the shoulder, the handshake, the smile, the joke. Hey, do you need this? Can I help you with that? Or sure. anything. Sure. That's a sign of affection. Love. John McShane. Nobody is loved by everybody. You're correct, John. No, nobody's pizza. Nobody's going to make everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> You could try your damnedest. I try my damnedest, okay? I try my damnedest, dude, to make every single customer that I have extremely happy. I want them to, everybody to like me. I do. I really do. But I still, I still, every once in a while, 
I get that email. You can go to hell with the rest of the town and blah, blah, blah. And you're bit, I, I get it. I'm like, I, I try, but I'm not pizza. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> without rules, you only have chaos. That's correct. True. True. See, that's what happens when you, you take money away from uh, police departments and stuff. You're going to have you're gonna end up with problems, right? I mean, you can't just. Yeah. Hey, Cindy Workman, I you know, I don't want to get off topic, but what's with Las Vegas letting the homeless occupy empty rooms in the hotels? I haven't dug into this, but downtown on Fremont Street, there's some motels, <laughs> one story motels. And there's a couple of them and they're taking, I don't know, a million point seven of our tax money and they're yeah, going to they take it. They're taking it from tax money. They take it from the taxpayers. The taxpayers are paying for their hotel. So <laughs> they a program to get these people in off the streets and rehabilitate them and try and get them, uh, you know, uh, put into a, into some type of integrate them an integration program to get them into work and find them jobs or whatever. So, um, Don Chichio, the old timers pinched you on the cheek. Oh, they did this to do the pinch thing and the little kisses on the cheeks, you know, and all that. Yeah, the little, oh, how you doing there? Yeah, I, real touchy touchy though, isn't it? But the, you know what? When you touch somebody, especially you touch their face, when you touch me, do you know how personal that is? To touch it's affection. Them? Look, it's so, like a hug, it's affection. So when you touch somebody in the face, if you if you you pinch their cheek, how you doing? You know, that's affection. But you can't get any more personal than that little pinch to your cheek. It's the complete opposite of crack. You know, Will Smith somebody boom right across the face. boom smack somebody. You ever been smacked in the face? When I was in the Marine Corps, yeah. Marine Corps. <laughs> Drill instructors. Yeah. Uh, Marshall Cafano had to think about that. When he used to slap somebody in the face, he used to play handball. When uh -huh. he slapped somebody in the face, that meant that the person was going to die. Really? Yeah. If he went up and slapped him with just a light tap, he didn't really hit him hard. But that meant that your days were numbered. You would never see it coming. It's better to be feared than loved if you're a gangster. You can't trust anybody. You have to be the lion and the fox, said Machiavelli. That's true. That's, from the movie. That's part of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's true Machiavellian. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Michael Graham, if you feared too if you feared too much, people around you get scared and paranoid and feel you may be next to feel their wrath. Next thing you know, the feared one is next to be betrayed. Very so you don't, want to be, you don't want to be feared too much because that, that's what's going to happen. I like can, that, Mike. Can I relate something here? I got whistled in about my my because my dad signed for the game machines, and mm -hmm. I was I was kind of afraid, uh, cautious about going in. What's going to happen? This that you know, I was just kind of a, cautious and not really feared because if I, I really feared it, I wouldn't go. But uh, truth of the matter is, when I got there. My, all my business are shut down. I, I complied with everything that was done. When they told me to shut down my dad, my dad said, no. No way I'm shutting down for those dagos. No way. And so when I hung up the phone, he told me to open my businesses, and I'm waiting for what's going to happen. And he walked me into the car, Joey Lombardo. When he walked into the car, he put his hand on my shoulder. What did he tell me? We can't be responsible for what our parents did or do. Right. And that was it. He put his arm on my shoulder. That was a sign of affection. Don't worry about it. Andy Boyle. The old days are gone. We have a nine-year-old girl in England dead by getting shot in the chest in her own home by so-called gangsters. Terrible. I didn't hear about that. Uh, don't know what what that's about, but um, that's 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 absolutely awful. Jose Christian, Semper Fi. You got a fellow uh, Marine. Semper Fi, buddy. Semper Fi. <laughs> Um, South we, we have a birthday coming up in November. <laughs> Southie 31 police department budgets in the major cities are in the billions. LOL. Um, as they should be. I, I really, <laughs> I've really, I've well-funded police. What is it? What is it? 3% of the budget? 
three percent of the yeah. budget. Yeah, I just it's it's uh, yeah. I somebody's put somebody's going to jump in front of me. Or somebody's going to help me, right? And uh, 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 or help somebody who can't help themselves. I think the person should be they're putting their life on the line. I think it should be compensated. It's it's, it's only it's only right. Uh, Jim Magnifici had a first grade teacher who pinched your cheek or grabbed your ear, but it was not a sign of love. No. <laughs> Pinch your cheek or grab your, grab your ear and pull you down. A, uh, right? <laughs> or yeah, too yeah. hard. Really pinched your cheek. Really pinched it. Eric Phillips, respect is different than fear. You can respect someone because they can install fear in others. Right. A good boss earns respect because they enforce rules, which are carried out by those that respect them. And that a good boss work. will always tell you what the rules are before it happens. There's like so I got told about, I got told about using drugs. No drugs. Right. Um, if we if we see it, we catch it once. That's it. The second time, you won't see it coming. All right. The photo of all the bosses uh, sitting in the restaurant was taken at Little Sicily Restaurant in Diversity in Harlem. I believe that's where that restaurant is. Correct. That's correct. Where was that photo found? The one that everybody clicked on to get into this video. During a IRS CID raid, it was found in. Uh, uh, DeVarco, Caesar DeVarco's uh, uh, duct, his, his, his air conditioning duct that came Caesar, into his uh, den. Caesar was a, a Rush Street crew? He was the Rush Street crew boss. He went back all the way back to the 42s. <laughs> Chief Ron, if you increase the police budget, you would have to reduce the skim. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right, Keith. Oh, T Fron, thanks for joining in. Hit the like button, guys. Smash it if you're coming in here. We're going to be doing our trivia from last week's uh, last week's show, which was about coin-operated vending machines and how the Chicago outfit, uh, how the Chicago outfit ran most of them. Misty Rapka, Semper Fi, my brother and sister, Leathernecks. Right. Um. Uh, there we go, Rick Charlton. That's why I actually like sheriffs. They're elected. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, They're elected. The people get to choose who the sheriff is, you know? Speaking of fa uh, fair, uh, Keaton was the guy's name. Ke my, uh, it was it was uh, uh, Deputy Keat here in town back in the 30s, 20s or 30s. Supposed to bring a, uh, supposed to bring a um, convict to court. And I guess he was a... Uh, little hungry he left breakfast uh, left for work early and missed breakfast so instead of taking the prisoner right to the courthouse he stopped at home for a bite to eat made the judge wait walked 20 20 minutes late and when the judge said what the hell okay you follow my rules my courtroom and instead of saying geez i was really hungry your honor and i stopped to have a bite to eat before because i you know instead of saying that he said you know what You've made me wait on you plenty of times. I think you could wait on me one. You see how this is going to go, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the judge finds him, contempts, finds him five bucks, which would be like $100 today. He left, thought about it, went back to the court, set a gun on the judge's desk, said, we're going outside for a duel. <laughs> Guess what happened to that deputy? He became sheriff. The people elected him sheriff. You know why? He stood up to him. He stood up to him. They respected him. It was respect. they respected him. They loved him too. And they feared him. That son of a bitch is crazy enough to do that. <laughs> I think I you have to have some sort of love. I this is my own personal opinion. You have to have some sort of love to respect anybody. Sure. Even a rattlesnake. I mean, you have to have some corner of you, you gotta respect it. If you fear it, it's different. You respect it, you let it go its own way. You don't have to kill it just because it's a snake. Right. Valmore has a, had a metal shop teacher in seventh grade in 1962. We're going back a little bit here. Who picked out a kid to rough up in every class the first day of school. Wouldn't happen today. No, it wouldn't happen today. But you know what? That teacher got his point across. Don't screw around in my shop. You come in here and you start screwing around, you're going to have problems. He wanted respect. I had I had a teacher, fourth grade teacher. Her name was Miss Hader. I'll never remember. I'll never forget the first day of class. My first day in public school. I'd been going to a, a, a parochial school the whole uh, 
my whole life. And, and I would never forget. She said, I'm not here to cut the mustard. She was like really trying to get her point. At it. You know what? It wasn't until my whole life that I didn't know. I'm sitting there going, what should take a line of mustard, put it down on there and then put a knife in it and cut the mustard. Like, and the other night Red said, no, no, it's means you water it down, you know, and they, they <laughs> cut the mustard by what I'm going, oh my God, it's taken me this many years of my life to finally just now learn that. <laughs> Tony Johnson, Ferriola, always okay, sorry about that. That if uh, if they don't respect you, then they must fear you. Very old always said, if they don't respect you, they got to fear you. That's right. Got to put the fear of God into them. Um, yeah, guys, we're, we're going to do the, the trivia in a few minutes. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining in today, too. Uh, Misty, Misty says, humans are like a pack of animals. If they smell fear, they attack. If That's you don't right. show fear, you become feared. That's correct true very true best Let's thing study humans <laughs> don't be afraid no no so the question today guys is it better to be oh, loved our... or feared yeah that's what we're talking about and uh and and we're going to be doing our trivia in just a little bit uh you guys are really chiming in today you must be interested in this subject matter we got uh, a good crowd <laughs> we do. it's a fun crowd today and in case you guys didn't know it um, the Vegas mob tour is, uh, it's up and running right now. You guys come to Vegas. You can take the Vegas mob tour. Yes, Hopefully. Michael. I did. Yes, Michael. I did. Michael Spilatro red. Did you hang out near grand Avenue? I certainly did by Jimmy Cozzo's place at, uh, it was actually on rice, rice and, um, Racine, but we called it grand and Ogden. Whenever huh. we went over there, I hung out there a lot. A great deal. There you go. It was a meeting place. <clears throat> Red spent a lot of time out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down there. <laughs> in the neighborhood. We call it the neighborhood. We yeah. never said we, we go, you go in the neighborhood. What are you going to the spot? The spot. Yeah. It's the spot. That's what they called it, the spot. Wow. I don't know how I got that nickname, but it did. Misty well, said she's gonna ex <laughs> abstain. <laughs> I got this one. <laughs> I didn't see it. Hold I, on. I'm gonna abstain <laughs> from, from the trivia this weekend. Okay, <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. It's all right though. It's a good question. You wait, wait till you see the hear the question. It's uh it's a damn good question. Let's take some more comments here. Uh, <clears throat> so, Brett Sher, glad you're enjoying the show. Please hit the like button, smash it. We call it the Thank old you, neighborhood. The old neighborhood. That's what we called it. We didn't call uh, it the old neighborhood. We said the neighborhood. It wasn't old then. <laughs> we called it the neighborhood. You're going to be in the neighborhood? Yeah, I'll be at the spot. Yeah, I think we got. I think we have. I think we have Bart Simpson on the show, Red. Really? Yeah, he wants to know if you know somebody. Uh, the name's Anita Dick in me. <laughs> Not another one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got another one of these guys on the show. <laughs> Where is it? I want to see him. Oh, my gosh. Kehlani Bernardo keeps asking if you knew about the manhole. No. The bar? No. Never heard Sounds of it. Sounds like another... Bart Simpson. Michael Spilatra read, my grandfather, John, was the cousin of Pat. Okay. That's my grandfather family. used to drive around in a truck selling food. So, I'm guessing that his grandfather was John Spilatro, and he was a cousin of Pat Spilatro. I only met two Spilatros in my life. Vic, Victor, and yeah. Tony. That's the only two I knew. What and I, was didn't Vic know Vic, I didn't know Vic that, that well. I knew Tony very well, but not Victor. Victor was around. Vic, we called him. Vic Spilatro. But I didn't know him that well, Mike. <laughs> McZagjan, hello from Loch Ness. Really? We have somebody all the way from over there listening in? Scott from Loch Ness. 
Michael said that is correct. Michael Spilatro, that is correct. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Jesus, unreal. This hey guys, guys real people. Instead of the guy, what's the guy that made you uh, witticism? Where where did he go? I'm looking for that comment. Did you boot him? No, I didn't boot anybody. Oh. Um, I, what was the comment you were looking for? The, the one where the guy made the comment, did you know somebody, what, what was it? Anita? No, the other one. Yeah, Anita. <laughs> this guy right here. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. No, no, you had another one. Oh, I, I need, I need, a, I need a dick or something like that. I, I need a dick. I need a Fung, fungi fritty. I don't know. There's, no. The audience is definitely a little goofy today. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was me, but I don't think so. I think it's the audience is a little goofy today. It's what it's got to be here. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. So uh, we're going to do the trivia question, uh, but Red, I just want to let everybody know. Vegas Mob Tour is open. You guys come to town, be sure to put the mob vlog code when you buy tickets to get yourself 20% off. You'll love it. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie, Casino, and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never before seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he's on. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit the Rat Pack is back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be. So, Red, I don't, and I'm going to get this wrong, but um, it means fried mushrooms, according to Don Ciccio and Street Stories. Fungi Fritty. Yeah. Fungi Fritty. I think I got that one right. Fritty um, is fried, so. <laughs> <laughs> fungi is mushrooms. Fungi. Yeah. You're, you're like a mushroom. You're a fungi. Somebody oh. just called me about this last night. Alan. Are you familiar Alan with Cole. Johnny Catuso? Al yeah, he asked me about Johnny. Uh, yes, I did. Johnny Catuso. He was, didn't he end up going to jail? He was a cop. No, he wound up. He wound up uh, botching the Canedo. Canedo. Oh, right, 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 right. He was with he the, wound up in the truck Campisi. of Volvo. Him and Campisi, Jasper Campisi. Right. Um. Uh, Thomas Chino. How much do you think the movie tax on locations was in Chicago, or have any knowledge of it? No. Well, it was big though. No, no clue. No clue. But. Um, BSJ said, do the tour. It's so worth the trip. And just wait, because we're going to do trivia now, but Red, you know what's what, what's going on and what, what <laughs> we're working on this last week. I'm working my butt off on something really, really, really big. It's going to be yeah. awesome. Yes. It's yep. going to be awesome. So, uh... <laughs> You might oh, even have a special guest on here soon. Oh my gosh, man! This is it. This is going to be so cool. What we're working on. I don't. I don't want to tell you guys yet, but this is going to be really cool. Uh, fungi, fungi, friti, fungi, friti. You see, I told you I was going to screw that one up. Fungi, friti is how you say it, not fungi, friti. Fungi. Fr Just call me Francis. Really butcher boy. Where? <laughs> Fancy Brady, that butcher boy. Where? <laughs> oh my gosh! Why do you have to make? Why you have to make that face when saying my name, Thomas Chino? Chino, Thomas. He's Brady. making a joke. He's making a joke. 
<laughs> uh, slap. Exactly, Keith Helton. Uh, what's the code for the Mob Tour? Best Magic. It is Mob Vlog. Yes. Best Magic. You're new to the channel, too. Hit that like button. Smash the like button, guys. Yes. Really, honestly. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. It's Sino. Not Chino. It's Sino. It's, it's Thomas. Thomasino. Thomasino. Just uh, call me. Francis Brady. Francis Brady, the Francis Brady. Francis Brady, the butcher boy. Francis Brady, the butcher boy. Where are all right, enough of this coursing around. We got to do trivia. All right, guys, it's trivia time. It's been fun today. I, I always I love doing this. It's so much fun. Uh, but it's time for trivia. We're going to have somebody call in uh, after they get the answer correct. Uh, and um, you guys ready for it? Here we go. So last week, we talked about coin-operated machines. We talked about all kinds of coin-operated machines. Coffee machines with coffee cups that had cards on them. We talked Cigarette about- Cigarette machines. Cigarette machines. machines. We talked about pay phones. We talked about all these different coin-operated machines. Pay right? machines. And the question is, first person that types in the right answer gets to spin the wheel of a deal right over here. So who- who, whoever answers correctly wins. Here we go. Are you guys ready? And a oh, row bear. We're not doing how many cigarettes Red has left in his pack. <laughs> Although we did that. We did that we on did his it once. show. We did it on his show for fun to, uh, to give away a book. But anyway, okay, here we go. This is the trivia question. Last week, we talked about coin-operated machines, all types of coin-operated machines around Chicago. And the question, the official question is this what was the coin operated machine product that brought women the most pleasure coin operated machine product that brought women the most pleasure <laughs> he said it we get the answer <laughs> no. Pachinko. No. Help. no, it's not Pachinko. That is not the one. Not the one. And okay, here we go. Here we go. We got ourselves a winner. We definitely have a winner. I just want to make sure it was anybody else. Larry Condom, very close. Cigarettes. Now, Big Tuna got it. But before Big Tuna got it, B. Duke got it. French tickler. That's right. The French tickler. That's sorry, Scott. Okay, then we're going up. Washing machine. And the I winner, saw me say washing machine. I know that. Washing machine. Who put washing machine in there? I said the red before the show. I said somebody's going to put down the telephone. They're going to put down the payphone. That's got to be the one that brought women the most pleasure. No, no, no. It was the French tickler. So call in, be book, and we will verify you, and you'll have a chance to spin the wheel of a deal that you can't refuse. That is so hilarious. Wow. I was watching a movie the other day. It was a um, new movie that I've never seen before. It came out in 1981 with De Niro and Robert Duvall. Do you guys remember the True Confessions movie? Oh, yeah. With the Did priest. you watch that True Confessions? Yeah. I didn't one watch was a that. Cop, the other one was a priest. Yeah, they were brothers. And they were like, yeah. both. that was a really cool dynamic, really cool story. But they're walking through the whorehouse. And the one girl opens the door. And she looks at Duvall. And she says, do you want to play carnival? And he said, what's that? <laughs> And she said, you sit on my face, or I sit on your face, and you guess my weight. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Come on, guys. You got to call in, B. Buke. You got the number down there. The the number the screen. It's right there scrolling across the bottom. Call in, and uh, let's get you on the show and spin the wheel. I'm looking forward to meeting you and hearing from you. So is everybody else. So please call in when you uh, – please call in so we can – we can spin the wheel and get on to the next show. So, yes, uh, fear, love, eh, you know, it's uh, both. It's a good combination. It's a fine yeah, line. It really is. Dominic Giorgano, Girano, Girango, Gir, Girango. Uh, Dominic, you got it too, but you were late. And um, if this guy doesn't call in, well, we'll go for number two in line. Five minutes? Five minutes the second one would have been Big Tuna, although I think Big Tuna won a couple of weeks ago. But it's okay. B-Book. Sorry. Come on. Call on in, B-Book. 
you um, you need to get on the phone. There we go. There we go. Anyway, folks. While we're waiting for that, you can, uh, after the show is over, you can um, come to my show on my channel, and uh, we're going to go into a different subject, Adam and I. Red We Met is the YouTube channel, R-E-D to be John McShane. I'm glad you got it, John. I'm, I'm glad I, I, it's, uh. I okay. hope when you finish reading it, you give me a review. Thank you so much. I just typed it in. Okay, we just verified him. And uh, what what's your name? Oh, uh, my name's Brandon. Brandon. All right, Brandon. And where are you from? I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. How long have you been watching the show? Oh, a long time, bro. A long time. A long time, <laughs> huh? Yeah. So when you guys were giving away the mugs with Frank, that's that's when I about started. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. So you've been on for a while. And uh, and obviously, you've been paying attention to the show because you got the trivia question, right? Um, where are you from? Oh, I'm living in Myrtle Beach now. In Myrtle Beach. And what do you do there? I'm actually a cook. You're a cook? Yeah. You're from there all your life, Brandon? What was that? You're there all your life? Oh, no. Actually, no. I'm from New York. So it's about <laughs> Awesome. Well, cool, man. Welcome to the show. You ready to spin the wheel? Let's do it. All right, here we go. And it's off. And it looks like Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, you won an autographed book from Red oh, Wind let's Met. Go. Let's go. Do, do you have it? Do you, do you already have it or do you want the book? No, actually, yeah, I'd love to have it. I don't have it. I don't own it. Great. Great, okay. Brandon. Brandon, I'll autograph it to Brandon and ship it out to you. We're going to send you. want an autograph to Brandon? Yeah, please. Yeah? All right. It's awesome. Brandon, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Thank you so much. You've won the prize. And uh, we'll, can we call you back at this number after the show? Yeah, that, awesome. yeah that's fine. Perfect. We'll get your address, your address so I can ship it to you. All right. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, just wait for a call. Yeah, Brandon, we'll call you back at this number. Can, can I actually, can I text you at this number? That's fine. Perfect. That's All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much. Hey, man, you have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Red. That was that was that was pretty cool. Yes, first time. <laughs> yeah, I love Somebody it. I love it. Didn't have it and was like, you know what? <laughs> oh, you guys are so fun. What's the chances that we get branded? Um. <laughs> so. Guys, it works for me. It works for me. <laughs> we're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna end, we're gonna wrap this up. It's been awesome with you guys. I've been you guys are an awesome audience. You've been fun today, and we're gonna be back next Wednesday. We may have a guest, we may talk about who knows what we're gonna talk about, but but I am gonna tell you what we are gonna talk about, and you guys can go down in the description and you can click on the link and you can join Red on his channel and hear about some uh, license plates in Chicago and what the different <laughs> codes. Red, how many digits did you have in your how many, story. how many how many digits did you have in your plate? Four. So if you guys three, four, zero, zero. Zero. three four zero zero. Thirty four hundred. Right. Wow. That might be the trivia question next week. You never know. <laughs> but hey guys, it's been fun and is all good things must come to an end. Now's the time. So, Red, you have a great day, sir. Everybody else that's watching, God bless you all. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and tuning in today. It's been fun. Welcome to my channel in a few minutes. <laughs> it's been fun. Mob vlog.